So a pretty fun thing to do when a new GPU is about to come out, but the review embargo hasn't lifted, as is the case with the 3070 Ti, is to monitor benchmarking websites like Ashes of the Singularity, because a lot of times you'll start seeing people posting the, uh, the benchmark scores for these cards before the embargo lifts. And let's check right now under GPUs for the Ashes of the Benchmark, and let's scroll down to the NVIDIA section, scrolling down to the NVIDIA section, and let's scroll down to the RTX section, and sure enough, RTX 3070 Ti. What do we have here? We have some results to take a look at. Now, these were just uploaded by whoever the heck Genesis Surge is, accidentally re violating review embargo, or maybe he just got his hands on a card early. You never know. Now, we've got results at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K, and here's the frames per second scores if you're interested on comparing it to yours. Now, the other thing we have to be careful here for comparisons on is the uh, API used. This was using DirectX 12, and here's the frustrating part, guys. They use the high settings, not the crazy settings. And the reason why that's frustrating is most people use the max settings when they benchmark, so this is gonna be, make it extremely limited when we look for comparisons. That's gonna be the problem. Okay, but we're gonna do the best that we can. So, we're gonna open up another tab and we're gonna see what we can compare it with. For example, let's compare the 3070 Ti to the 3070. Now to do this, again, we're gonna look at the, the high presets. You know what, this is gonna work best if I disappear. There we go. All right, I'm not in your way anymore. So we need to use high presets. By the way, I'm not gonna use 1080p. Why am I not gonna use 1080p? There was only a three frames per second drop going from 1080 to 1440, which tells me that they were CPU bottlenecked at 1080p, so 1080p is not gonna be particularly relevant. That's why I'm not using it. Um, they were probably CPU bottlenecked. By the way, the CPU here is an R9 uh, 3900X. So what we're gonna look for is a R9 3900X benched at the high preset at at least 1440p, so high 1440p, and we want to limit this to DirectX 12. And um, then we're gonna look for an R9 3900X. And we actually do have one, here we go. So we have R9 3900X 12 core. The highest score anyone has uploaded on that processor at these settings is 94. So if we pop back here, we see that with the 3070 Ti was getting 102. Now these were uploaded by different people on different systems. So these are not a complete apples to apples comparison, but it was an R9 3900X. We don't know the overclocking situation or any of that, but these are early leaked results and this is the best we can do. It was 94, right? So I'm doing 102 divided by 94 and that gets us an eight and a half percent gain. So. The best we can do for 1440p performance based on the results available to us is say that we are getting around an 8.5% uh, performance jump compared to a 3070. Okay, uh, yeah, that was, uh, so that was that. Now let's see if we can find any high 4K results. So high 4K results and unfortunately the only RTX 3070 result we have is on an R7-1700X. That is a much weaker processor than a 3900X, so I just do not think it's gonna be relevant to compare scores. If you are curious, I mean 57, 90, but that's unrealistic. Again, the 3900X is making a difference here let's not bother comparing those. Okay, so that's the best comparisons we can make to a 3070, but how about we compare it to a 3080? So let's scroll down our little GPU list. And um, by the way, I'm showing you guys how this works so that you can just like pop into this website and compare it to things yourself if you're interested. Anyway, let's pull up the RTX 3080. So if we pull up the 3080, um, at high 4K, DirectX 12, there's literally no results. Like I said, everybody uses crazy. So uh, unfortunately, we've got high. Let's check the high 1440p. Now we have some results, but are any of them the processor that we're looking for? Nope. 
Wait, we go farther down, and the answer is still nope, I believe. So nothing on that first page appears to be a R9 3900. Let's check page two, and we've got a big nope once again. All right, guys, so it's looking like we can't get any particularly relevant uh, comparisons to a 3080, other than if you ignore the CPU, the best score we've seen here is 112. Other scores seem to be a lot lower than that. You know, we got around 101, 103. And again, our score here was 90. So I'm not going to bother doing a percentage difference there because it's a different CPU. But if you just want to do a completely apples to oranges comparison with a completely different CPU, there you go. All right, guys, now let me pop myself back in here and just say a couple things about the Ashes, uh, the Ashes benchmark here. This is an older game. It does tend to get some CPU bottlenecks with really good cards, but the, um, the 3070 Ti I don't think is in a class where it's going to be too CPU bottlenecked. Like I said, um, at 1080p, I think it would be pretty bottlenecked. However, notice that it does drop significantly from the 1440p score down to the 4K score. So you definitely are stressing the GPU enough um, on that system for this to be at least somewhat relevant. Although again, this game is a little bit older. This is not the only benchmark I have for you today. So the other thing uh, you can scroll around doing a similar process for is uh, places like Geekbench. So Geekbench has some results now for a 3070 Ti. This is a 3070 Ti, and it is um, uh, getting us some results here. So this one's done on an i9 whatever. I'm going to make myself disappear again. I'm just in the way. Okay, so we've got the uh, CUDA score here, and they also have an OpenCL score. Now, once again, the score itself is somewhat meaningless. You want something to compare it with. Now, thankfully, and I will link this article in the description and give credit where credit's due, over at Video Cards, uh, they did an article on these um, same results, and they've built this excellent chart that is much better than anything I would have time to prepare for you. So I'm going to show this to you guys here and link this article in the description. So if you set those 3070 Ti scores to 100%, we now have uh, comparisons with the 6800, the 6900, the 3080, and the 3090, as well as the 2080 Ti, the 3070, and a 3080 laptop GPU. Check that out. So you can see the percentage differences here. Now, one thing I'm interested in is, as we saw in the Ashes benchmark, um, this is now a 13%, whereas we saw like an 8.5% difference. Although, this, um, although the CUDA score is more of a 7%, right? The CUDA score is lining up closer to what we saw in the gaming, whereas the OpenCL is, is, a, is a larger gap. So anyway, um, but the CUDA score was, was lining up with what we saw in the Ashes benchmark pretty closely for the 3070 versus the 3070 Ti. Now, I was actually pretty interested in how these cards would, cards would score, because if we, uh, if we compare their specifications, it's extremely close to a 3070, except for the fact that it's using GDDR6X RAM instead of just the normal, normal GDDR6. And this gets it a much, much larger memory bandwidth um, and memory clock here. It also means, um, it also seems to be drawing more power and it's a hundred more dollars. But the thing is, if you actually look at the GPU clusters, it only has two more clusters and it doesn't have all that many more CUDA cores. Right? And only, so um, I, I was really interested in how much this would all pay off. It does have a higher, um, a higher clock speed. And, and so I wasn't sure, like, because if we just do like 48 over 46, if you're just like just directly comparing that, like 48 over 46, you know, that's only slightly over a 4% increase, right? But we're seeing a more like a seven and a half percent in the ashes of the sing, sing, sorry eight and a half percent in the ashes of the singularity. We're seeing thirteen percent on the OpenCL, and we're seeing seven uh, seven percent on the CUDA scores. So that's showing us that 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 six X memory and the higher clocks are actually paying off for more than just gaining the two uh, the two GPU clusters. Okay, guys. 
What do you think about all of this? You can let me know in the comments section. I do read every comment on my channel and I reply to as many as I get the chance to. And I hope that you guys have an excellent day. And thank you, my scribers, you're beautiful people.